On this channel, we've discussed hated attacks, overpowered attacks, and toxic attacks. But today I wanted to discuss an attack so hated by the Mortal Kombat community that Netherrealm straight up removed it from the sequel. And that move is of course Sub-Zero's Ice Clone, an attack that's been around since some of the earliest games, and it's why I consider Sub-Zero the Ryu of Mortal Kombat, because this man controls space. And depending on which game we're playing, the Ice Clone is either okay or absurdly good, and in Mortal Kombat X, I think the Ice Clone was at its strongest. But okay, what can this clone do? Well, for starters, it controls space. When I place this bad boy down, you have to find some way to get around him, so I hope your character has a teleport. But even if your character does have a teleport, still be careful, because Sub-Zero can just walk in front of his Ice Clone, and guess what? Boom, you're frozen. Yeah, if you touch this thing, you're frozen. In fact, he can even throw you into it in this game and get a full combo. And that becomes absurdly strong in the corner, but we're gonna talk about that a bit later. Right now, we're still talking about space control, because Sub-Zero can activate this thing right in front of your face, which means if you jump at him, it can actually be an anti-air. And if you don't believe me, just check this out. I'm gonna tell Reptile to do a jumping punch, alright? A simple overhead. And now I'm going to react to the jump and make my clone. And boom, he's frozen. I can run in, get a full combo, yada yada yada. Now doing this clone on reaction is not the easiest thing, but it was possible. However, Sub-Zero typically did it in advance because he knew you were going to jump, and because he backdashes when creating the clone, it makes it that much better of an anti-air. So already that's pretty good, but get this, the clone can also absorb a projectile in this game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. On top of stopping your opponent from moving forward, it also negates the projectile too. And that's a big deal because if the opponent wants to throw their own projectile, guess what? I can just do my own and now they're completely frozen for a full combo and I didn't even get hit, which means I have plenty of time to move in and capitalize on the freeze. Having the clone eat this projectile is way better than just simple trading because if I don't have stamina to run in, then maybe I can't close the gap in time, especially not from full screen. However, thanks to the clone, I recover much sooner because I wasn't hit. So yeah, it's godlike for projectile exchanges. In fact, for whatever reason, the clone itself can be a projectile. I don't know why they put this in the game. I think it was completely unnecessary, but hey, it does some really good damage. And due to its arc, it's actually really hard to jump over. So it's kind of a weird air projectile. If you don't believe me, I'm going to tell Reptile to like jump like this, and I'm gonna see if I can hit him with the clone. I bet I can most of the time. Yeah, look at that. It hits really high. So jumping this thing was really, really difficult. I'm gonna try and throw it at the peak of his arc. Ah, there you go. So if Reptile's as high as possible, then I can't hit him with this thing. But outside of that, this clone can hit him. And in fact, if he's closer, then it's guaranteed to hit him. Because again, the arc is just so good on this thing. Check it out. So summon the clone. Yeah, that was the highest part of his jump, and it still got him. So up close, this thing is a don't jump projectile. Once again, I don't think that Sub-Zero needed this. I think the Ice Clone was already extremely godlike. But hey, it's just one more thing that makes this move absurd in this game. And in case you're wondering what the meter burn does, it just stays on screen for a little bit longer. And I think that's it. But let me know in the comment section if it does anything outside of that. Because now it's time to talk about something truly unique about the Ice Clone in this game that it's never been able to do in any past Mortal Kombat, and that's shattering it. This does a remarkably high amount of damage for a single hit, 12%. And then on top of that, I do believe the block damage is also pretty high, but let me go ahead and see. So Reptile's gonna block here. Let's check out the damage. Yeah, 2.5%, almost 3%. That's a big deal. That's more block damage than a typical attack string. And that can be a big deal if the opponent's low on life and you just want to finish them off because you set up the clone and they think the detonation is coming, they jump, boom, anti-air and then get a combo, kill them that way. Now just like the throw mix-up, the detonation becomes even more powerful in the corner, but we're not going to talk about that just yet. And of course, you can also meter burn the detonation, but you don't get anything extra off of it because the main point of the meter burn detonation is to launch the opponent for combos. It doesn't make the ice clone explosion any better from what I've tested. The damage on block is the same, the damage on hit is the same, so it's not great for the ice clone. And sadly, this clone did lose something amazing from the previous game. You can no longer do it in the air, and that was always possible in the classic games. You could do a back jump and then make the clone, and it was right in the middle of the screen, which meant the opponent couldn't jump over it, and they couldn't walk under it either. It was a menace. And then on top of that, the Ice Clone would copy the animation of whatever your previous attack was. So if you did this move, for example, and did the clone, then you would create a clone with that kick pose, and it was awesome, because this made it so much harder for your opponent to escape the corner, and it also made the clone just more creative in general. Because keep in mind, it's the pro players that figured this out. I don't think it was intentional for it to be this strong, but the pros just figured out, hey, if I do this string and then the clone, it becomes a much bigger clone. It's way harder to jump over. And I definitely
definitely miss that. In MKX, it's always the same pose, no matter what string you do before activating it, which is a real shame, because I really miss the creativity it had in MK9, but I still think this is the best the clone's ever been, and once we move to the corner, you'll understand why. Okay, so once Sub-Zero had you cornered, he was going to end the combo with Ford 1-2, and as you can see, the opponent is knocked flat on their back, and they can't get up for a while, which means you can summon a clone. And look at that, they're face-to-face -face with your clone, and if they touch this, they will get frozen. And that is where the mind games begin. For starters, Sub-Zero has a low. And if you have the clone activated, you can detonate for a full combo. And the reason you want to detonate and not go for the ice ball is because you get way more damage. The ice ball will always reduce the overall damage of the combo, and that's not the case for the clone detonation. And even though the game doesn't let you summon clones back to back, as long as your combo is long enough, the cooldown will reset and you can summon a second clone after the forward 1 2 to end your next combo. Or in other words, Sub Zero could start a combo, end like this summon a clone, and then do the whole thing over again. Get a combo, end with this string, back up, and then summon a clone all over again. And you might be thinking, well, I'll just block low then, because I don't want to get comboed, so I'll just crouch. Guess what? Sub-Zero's overhead is his best combo starter. It leads to the most damaging combos that he has. So yeah, crouching is a really bad idea. And in fact, because the ice clone is right there, guess what? You get comboed for free. He doesn't even have to do a second back two. So yeah, not a good idea to crouch. And so you might be thinking, well, I'll just jump forward then. I don't want to deal with the 50 50s i'm out of here but remember he recovered before you did the clone is summoned he can jump straight up and knock you out of the sky for trying to leave the corner or in summary jumping wasn't the best idea it could work in theory if the opponent's just not expecting it but if they are and their reactions are good the neutral jump punch is going to beat your jump out every single time and that's why honestly your best way out of the corner was an armored attack because it would break the clone and still hit sub-zero because the clone can only take one hit so an armored attack could be a really good option however keep Keep in mind that most armored attacks are unsafe in this game, so if the Sub-Zero player saw it coming, he could just block it and then punish you for a full combo, and now you're back in the corner, you're gonna get a hard knockdown, and here comes the clone shenanigans all over again. However, of course the Sub-Zero player has to predict the armored wake up. If he guesses wrong and doesn't see it coming, then you will escape the corner, but even then, you still need one bar of meter to do an armored attack, so if you're out of meter, then you're out of luck, and you just have to hope you have the best defense in the world. But then we have the final mix-up. Up, the throw. Yeah, Sub-Zero can do an unblockable into the Ice Clone, and he gets up in time for a full combo, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now thankfully, from what I've tested, if you break the throw, then you do not get frozen, so that's at least one good thing. Some characters can combo you even if you break the throw, like Predator and Raiden, they have crazy options like that. Thankfully, Sub-Zero's clone is a bit more forgiving than that. If you expect the throw, then you're not going to get comboed. But keep in mind that this unblockable setup still worked on a majority of players, even at the the pro level, because it's not just the throw you're watching out for, it's also the lows and the overheads. If you guessed wrong in that rock, paper, scissors situation, you were going to eat a lot of damage, almost always around 30%, and if the low caught you, I think it was the most damaging and did around 40 and 50% damage, which is absolutely insane for a mix-up this strong. So yeah, in this variation, Sub-Zero's main idea was to corner you, summon the clone, and then go for the most unfair mix-up in the game, because there's three different ways to guess wrong, and if you do, you're going to lose a third of your life, and then he gets to do it all over again. You're not even free after you guess wrong. He can just do the same clone setup over again. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think Netherrealm did the right thing by removing this move, or are you like me and you think the Ice Clone is iconic and extremely creative and just needs to be nerfed a little bit because it's a core part of Sub-Zero's character? And I better not catch anybody in the comment section calling this move the Ice Clone. This is not the Ice Clone. It is crappy by comparison. Just in case you don't play Mortal Kombat 11, this is the Arctic Trap and it is the replacement for the Ice Clone, but it's not the Ice Clone, and let me explain why. For starters, this move be really slow, 41 frames on startup. You cannot do that on reaction to somebody's jump in. And to make matters worse, if you hit Sub-Zero, this thing just goes away, so it's not even good for controlling space. Look at that, she can do a neutral jump punch and get over my trap. But how about projectiles? Does it at least stop them like the Ice Clone? Nope, no it doesn't. Projectiles pass right through this thing. It is useless against zoning. You cannot use this thing for projectile exchanges. And of course, you also can't can't throw it, you can't shatter it, detonate it, none of that stuff. He just stands there like a weird roommate. And then perhaps worst of all, for the final nail in the coffin, you can't even throw the enemy into this thing. That is so lame. Ah, the unblockable setup is completely gone and ruined. And look, maybe you think that would make it too strong, but I'm just saying, it's not the Ice Clone. It can't do anything the Ice Clone can do. I think the only cool thing this guy can do that the Ice Clone can also do is you can throw the opponent into it after a meter burn slide, which 
is cool, you get a combo, and that's very nice. However, outside of that, this move is garbage. If you want to say it's decent for Mortal Kombat 11, that's completely fine, and you can argue that, but don't call it the Ice Clone. It's not the Ice Clone. It's slow, it can't do much of anything, and you can barely do any setups into it. This move is trash by comparison to the Ice Clone. Once again, tell me your thoughts in the comments below, and also leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It really does help my channel out a ton. And then keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell, that way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.